well, we have all these exams. And so there's intimidation or fear that the GRE is going to be difficult to navigate through. And we've even had students that have tried the GRE or have taken it once, twice, three times. And they're like, I don't know what to do. And the schools that I want to apply to need a 300 or a 294. What is up? How are you doing? My name is Joseph Googie. I am a physical therapist and one of the co-founders of Pre-PT Grind, where we help you get into physical therapy school and make money while you're there. So uh, in this video, I want to talk to those of you that have struggles with standardized exams and know that at some point in your journey, maybe it's now, maybe it's a year from now, maybe it's in six months, you will have to take the GRE in order to apply to the schools that you want to apply to. So I want to talk to you about that because this is uh, something that we see a lot. We have a lot of students that we have uh, privately coached and then students that we talk to a lot on our social media platforms um, who have had the struggle of having uh, issues with standardized exams in high school or uh, in, I mean, even grade school. We have all these exams. And so there's intimidation or fear that the GRE is going to be difficult to navigate through. And we've even had students that have tried the GRE or have taken it once, twice, three times. And they're like, I don't know what to do. And the schools that I want to apply to need a 300 or a 294 or a, th or a 305, whatever the numbers are, uh, knowing that the schools that are like just that much closer to you getting in to them or the schools that you want to attend want the GRE. And remember, not every school needs the GRE, but for the schools that do want the GRE, which at this point is still quite a few, uh, how do I navigate through it? What I'm going to give you is five steps, um, what I'm going to call the big five, the big GRE five. I don't know, I'm making up a name, right? But it's five steps that I'm going to give you um, that will help you get started on a path that will help you get um, a better GRE score. And then, of course, at the end of this video, I'll give you an opportunity to uh, continue leveling up after this. And of course, if you find value value in this video or in this training um, and also just find value in anything else that you've seen us do, please like, subscribe, share this out with other friends uh, that you feel would value this and just keep binging on all of the value that we have for you. So uh, let's talk about it. How to pass the GRE exam. I'm going to call it how to pass the GRE exam in, in 2023, just because as I'm filming this, we're at the end of 2022. Uh, and so if you struggle with standardized exams, this is exactly what you should be listening to. So um, let's talk about it. So I, I'm not going to spend time talking about what the GRE is. I'm not going to talk about what it consists of, uh, you know, but this is a key standardized exam that uh, for years up until now, maybe at some point they will, uh, you know, eliminate it from the process entirely. But for now, uh, schools still look at it. And it's just important to understand that for the schools that do look at the GRE, um, one of the reasons is because they just feel like some, I mean, now, is it really an indicator of how well you'll do on your board exam? I, I don't really know. There, There's some, you know, like there's arguments on both sides, but for a lot of schools, it's like, well, like if you can show us that you can do well on the GRE, then we know that, or we at least have more faith or belief, or we feel more confident in your ability to potentially pass the board exam, right? Because for the schools that you're applying to, you just have to remember that there, there are certain things they're looking for, but there's also certain things that the schools are afraid of. Does that make sense? And so when schools are using their process of figuring out who their uh, class of 40 or class of 60 or whatever is going to be or who's going to you know be in that class they're looking for things that they feel will give them a hint or a clue as to how you will perform in their program um as to how you'll fit their culture as a program and of course you're in your ability to actually finish school and pass your board exam because if you didn't pass your board exam or if you didn't finish pt school then um i mean maybe you don't want to hear it, but it kind of looks bad on them as well, right? So for example, imagine applying to a school that said, we have a 50% first time board exam pass rate. Like, how would you feel about it? Like, you wouldn't like that. Now, if you hear we have a 95% board exam first time pass rate, now you're like, okay, I I, I want to go to that school because I'll somehow we as, as students, we associate that with thinking, okay, cool. Like if I go to that school, I'll have a better chance of uh, not only finishing school, but passing my boards so that I can actually practice as a physical therapist, uh, because what good is knowing the information if you can't actually use it with patients, right? And so uh, the, the GRE for some schools is like kind of plays that role. Um, and, and like I said, there there's a lot of conflict and arguments on whether or not it's a real, real good indicator. At the end of the day, let, let's talk about how to actually improve 
scores on any standardized exams. And if you use what I'm going to share with you, which is these big five, um, you'll be able to take steps forward towards uh, doing well on the GRE. And this is exactly what we have um, helped our students do so that they could absolutely crush it. So uh, let's talk about it. The, 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 the big GRE five, I guess is what we're going to call it, right? So um, number one, you want to figure out where you're actually at, right? So one of the best ways to figure out where you're currently at is to take a practice test right now there's a i'm sure you've heard a lot of different things about practice exams and some people will tell you you know take a practice exam every single week or take a practice exam after you've studied for two months or take a practice exam every other i mean like those things i mean just let's understand why we're doing these things right because if we understand why then it'll just help you make better decisions and actually get the thing that you want from it which is a better score and of course uh the ability to get the score that you need for the schools that you're applying to does that make sense and so uh when it comes to a practice exam you want to take it so i i truthfully like when i coach somebody i am telling them to take it as soon as possible if someone's like i'm about to start studying for the gre i'm like yo like you better take a practice exam like this weekend right and the reason for that is because let's just figure out where you're at right um that'll help us figure out number one which areas do you struggle in? It'll help us figure out um, how do you do with a super long exam, right? Most of us have never had an exam that was more than an hour, right? So to have an exam that's three to four hours, that's a big deal, right? So like, how how does your brain deal with that? Do you get mentally fatigued? Do you uh, start to drift off? Do you have a hard time with focus? There's so many little details and things that you can only find out if you've actually done the thing. It's kind of like, if I, uh, you know, if I want to figure out if I'm good at soccer or basketball or whatever, like, I mean, shoot, one of the best ways to find out is just put me out on the court or put me out on the field and just let's just see what happens. And then from there, if I'm really, really terrible, then, then at least, you know, I can fix anything and everything will help my, you know, ability go up. And so with the GRE, it's the same thing, because what ends up happening is a lot of times when we're studying for the GRE, we'll use prep books and things like that. And the only issue with that, and I mean, there's... The, they all have their purpose. I, I, I just think we've been taught incorrectly uh, where we've been taught by this prep book and it'll help you prepare for the GRE and that's it. And it's, it's like, well, or take this GRE prep class in our school and it'll help you prepare for the GRE. Here's the issue. Most of those are not helping you figure out what your weaknesses are, right? Or what's in your way. And what ends up happening is you end up being given a very, uh, you know, uh, not even tailored. It's just very generic, a very generic game plan that you just follow, assuming that you have the same obstacles, problems, um, you know, challenges on the exam that other students do. And it just doesn't make sense. Does that make sense? Like, so, so hopefully what I'm saying so far is resonating. Uh, but, but that's where I see a lot of students getting stuck. Right. And the reality is we just got to figure out where you're at, right? Because where you're at may be different from where I am at or where another student's at. So let's figure that out and not just the areas that I struggle with in the exam, but also the, the things surrounding it, my focus level, what's happening. Am I, do I, do I rush through like just my pacing, like just all those different things are important to help us know what should I be putting my energy into? So that's point number one, take a practice exam. Number two, find out where I'm losing the most points, right? Which areas am I losing the most points um, when I took the practice exam? And remember, like when you're taking a practice test, make sure that you take it like, like take it like it's the real thing, like be in an environment that's not distracting, uh, where your family's not walking in every other minute, uh, where your phone is not there, treat it like the real thing. Tell your family and friends like what you're doing uh, so that they do not distract you. Do not have your like IG open or your TikTok account, like none of that because you wouldn't have that for the real exam. So let's mimic it if you want to have a really, really accurate um, depiction of how you would do, right? And so, um, you know, we need to figure out where I'm losing the most points because then and only then can I go to point number three, which is identify the reason why I'm struggling with those specific things, right? So um, there's a few different reasons why I can get questions wrong or struggle on an exam is number one, I actually don't know the material, right? So this, like, for example, I, like all of us have seen questions on tests where we're like, man, like I, I just don't even feel like I've seen this material before. Like th this is like foreign, right? Was this was this there when I was studying, right? So if I don't know the material, then that is one reason why I might not do well on the exam, right? Or, or I might not get certain questions right. Um, number two, there are questions that I get wrong, not necessarily because I didn't know it, but I was just familiar with it, right? So that's the information that I'm, fam uh, you know, I haven't really mastered it, but when I see it, I'm like, yeah, I recognize this, but. It, like I haven't done the reps enough to be really, really good at it. So those are the questions that I'm like, oh, it's at the tip of my tongue or, oh, if I had two or three more minutes, 
I'd be able to perform better on it. Does that make sense? And so um, I need to figure out why I'm struggling with those problems. Another type of issue that we have with, uh, you know, uh, questions that we get wrong is basically silly mistakes or uh, things that are beyond just information and knowledge, which is why when I tell, like, like when, I, when I hear students say, well, I just need to study harder. I just need to study more hours. It's like, is that the only reason that you're struggling? No, it's not, right? Because there's other things that are affecting your performance as a whole, right? So like, what are the other things? Do I have mental fatigue? Am I, is my brain starting to shut off two hours in? Am I rushing through certain sections? Is my pacing off? Um, am I just not reading? the questions properly because you'll sometimes look through your practice test and be like man those are questions i should have not gotten wrong which means that we have a lot of unforced errors that we had that are costing you points we just got to figure that like all that stuff out and once we do then and only then can we go to point number four which is creating a tailored study plan based off of that this is where students get it wrong Right. Most students just go for it and they're overwhelmed and they're stressed and they're freaking out. I see it all the time um, instead of realizing that this is how we have to do it. Like these are the steps. And if you create a if you have a like if you have a tailored plan now, if you don't know how to do it, I'll tell you some next steps in a second. But like like if you have a tailored plan, then what it does, it allows you to say, OK, cool. Like now I actually know which areas I need to study. I also know what non-studying related skills I need to improve, whether it's my ability to have more mental endurance. I have to learn strategies to improve that. I have to learn strategies to improve my pacing. I have to understand how the, the test writers are creating the exam so that I go in understanding the psychology of the exam. Y'all, like that's the stuff that you have to do. And if you start playing the game that way, you will give yourself a much higher chance of not not only increasing your score, but blowing past whatever score you thought was possible or impossible to hit. Does that make sense? And then point number five is have an accountability system or an accountability team. So, for example, with students that we coach, one of the biggest things is we want them to be around other students that are going through the same thing so that they have accountability. They're actually showing up for themselves. I can't tell you how many times students are like, I studied for the GRE for six months, but out of that six months, like 80 percent of it was spent freaking out or not knowing what they were doing or just looking at the book and hoping for the best. Like we, we made so much time because we're in our head all the time. And so um, especially if you struggle with standardized exams, this is huge. So um, I'll restate those five one more time. Number one, practice test. Let's figure out where you're at, right? Uh, number two, uh, figure out where you're losing the most points. Number three, identify a reason why you're struggling with those problems or the reasons. It's multiple, right? Why am I losing the most points? Um, number four, creating a tailored study plan based off of that. And Number five, um, having an accountability system, uh, period, the end, right? So if you are struggling with standardized exams or if you have struggled with standardized exams, this is a reminder that there is still hope. You're going to be fine. Like, like we just have to take off the mindset that we've had. Please do not treat the the, the GRE like it's um, like it's a like like like, you know, like it's a final exam, right? Or a typical exam that we have in in class or chemistry or whatever like don't treat it like any other exam because if you do that's when it'll start to affect you and um you know be be challenging to do well on so uh but it's very very possible don't just think oh i'm not good at standardized tests i can't do it no you can't you, you, you for sure can you've just never been taught how cool uh and if you are like yo like i want help i want to figure this thing out so um there are two things you can do number one you can either find us on instagram um so it's literally Free PT grind on Instagram um, and just set, send us a DM and say, Hey, uh, I, I just saw the, you know, video on YouTube about the GRE. Um, uh, can I get help on figuring out how to do these things for myself? If you're stuck, if you're like, Hey, I know exactly what to do after this Joseph's then cool, go do it. But if you're like, I need help, that's your first step. The second thing is, uh, we have a free training. That's like literally 10 minutes or less, but will help you just shift your perspective on everything that will help you become rejection proof. So, um, go to rejectionproofprept.com and we got you covered. Uh, and that is it. I hope this was helpful. Uh, if this was valuable, please share this with another friend or another pre PT, or another student that you believe, uh, would value this specific training, uh, so that you can absolutely crush your GRE exam in 2023. Let's freaking go, uh, have a blessed one and we'll see you on the next training. Bye.